I'm going to rattle off the things that I did this week. Not that I particularly want your approval, but you just might find this interesting. And then maybe I'm going to talk about it uh, in a moment. Okay. Looking at blank paper or pretending to look at blank paper while actually reading from my digital file. I have updated Pacific Daily Times videos with closed captioning. That means on YouTube, you can go to the Pacific Daily Times YouTube channel and all of those editorials have the text written into them. So if you want to read along, you can. That's probably going to be better for people trying to study English, but whatever. No, there'll be real closed captions and they will be included henceforth. I updated 11 videos, including Church 2.0 and how I podcast using WordPress with no plugins. Running two, three, four podcasts a week. I guess I know. Um, I, and of course, some videos updated to From Asia with Love.net on YouTube. I created all by my lonesome 768 base pictures to help art and math students understand the relationship between binary and hexadecimal numbers and RGB coloring. So you know, this is going to help art students and math students, no matter who you are. I mean, when you see numbers producing color and they're, they're, they're ones and zeros and they're Fs in, in nines and threes, that, I mean, it's whatever your struggle, whatever subject in school you struggle with, that's going to be useful. I'm, no, I made about 40 pictures before. No. How many was it, George? 20? Whatever. It doesn't... But I finished them. This is the funny thing. No, I, I, I'm creating... And I've got to create all these... I mean, I have 768 pictures in order to make this video. And it takes me about a minute to make one of them. It would normally take an ordinary person five or ten minutes to make one, but I've got it worked out. Now, now do the math on this. It would take me a minute to produce one of these pictures I'm making for this video, but I made over 500 of those pictures in just five hours. How did that happen? A hundred a minute, or a hundred, a hundred in an hour when it takes a minute to make one. George, does that make sense? Right, my subject shouldn't be math. Maybe I could maybe I could do miracles like Jesus did. He wasn't very good at math either. Uh see, Jesus, how many people can you feed with twelve loaves of bread? Oh yeah. Uh, uh <clears throat> I could probably feed about uh two thousand, five thousand, I don't know. Um yes. Do you know? The, if you've been to the Pacific Daily Times websites, have you noticed that like the little clicky thing at the top hasn't been working? That's because there was an update. And don't we know that updates like to break things? So I've completely switched the themes. They look better and reading is better and easier at the Pacific Daily Times website. So if you haven't been to symphony or jessiesteel.pacificdailytimes.com, you need to go see them and see the new website that I've been making. And... At Pinkwright, I wrote a passive voice chart. Did you know that the passive voice has all kinds of permutations in English? Like, I have been eaten, I have been seen, he was listened to, he was heard. Those are all passive voice. Did you know that there are many permutations for this? I didn't know until I created it this week. Um, what else did I do? Yes, I made handwriting numbers for practice in case you want to practice your numbers in handwriting. I made that. And I made two fonts. English, Greek, Cyrillic. I finished my... Yeah, that's... Cyrillic is the Russian alphabet for those of you in Read Rapids. I did all this this week. I, I don't know. I, I just... I'm amazed. I, in fact, last night I got all my work done. I'm amazed. So, what am I going to do now? Um, I'm going to go back to editing memoirs of Ophanine. Uh, there were a lot of page turner chapters, long, boring narration. As I understand from the current generation today, the, 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 the student generation, uh, Lord of the Rings is a bit of a page turner. There's a lot of dialogue in there or not, not dialogue. There's a lot of, uh, discourse and such. And I'm revamping memoirs of Ophanin so that it, 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 it has stories that move. I, I want more dialogue and interaction where angels talk to and fight with and help each other. Um, 
Well, the, the basic idea of the book, and I, I, when it came out like 2012, um, the, the basic idea of Memoirs of Ophanine is it goes back to the time before most angels were created, when it was just the um, angels such as the four living creatures, even, even before them, kind of. And then before like Michael and the gang were invented and they were still sleeping. And then it follows that angelic history 3000 years before the creation of the earth. And then all the way up until, uh, well, until, until Christ returns and, and through the millennium and, and these angels interact with each other and the Bible stories and human history just kind of happens as side characters. Like, you know, you have these angels going at it and then there's this, this guy who, walks into a city. Oh, it's, it's Jonah. Well, glad he showed up. Finally, I can get to work. Like that's how the storyline goes. And it's sort of nice to understand. It kind of addresses a pragmatic perspective. You know, what, what's the other side of the story? Why does God make sense from his perspective? I mean, when, when heaven is your reality, things on earth are much more explainable. You're afraid less you get more done Be- because God is alive and well. There are angels and demons running around doing things. And if you just understand what they're actually doing, then you can live your real life more effectively because they are factors. Now, I'm not talking about being so heavenly minded that you're of no earthly good, but there's too many people that are so earthly minded that they're of no heavenly good either. Now, heaven is a reality. It's not our reality, but it affects our reality. And we need to see things from that perspective. Heaven will eventually become our reality. And we need to know how God views his plans for eternity. So that was kind of the idea of M- Memoirs of Ophanine. And I'm targeting that now. I've already got the draft written to, to revamp it. And that's going to be fun. And I need to say this. I may make a video uh, where I talk about this on camera because people like you know, discussion, but you're going to get this first because you are a listener. Yeah. Like you listen to things. I've been contemplating Kindle, Amazon, and it's a yay boo. Uh, it, it, it's, it is what it is altogether. I like Amazon and I'm thankful for the Kindle. I, I own a Kindle. I, I read books. I buy books on my Kindle for my Kindle. Uh, yay Kindle, but I've got two main problems with Amazon's Kindle. One, it doesn't read EPUB files. It uses .mobi files, not .epub files. Now, .mobi files are Kindle's own special file format for eBooks. That's cool because it, it, it can get along with the Kindle and do awesome things like jump around to different page references and footnotes. That's cool. But even Microsoft Word can open up documents with other formats. Why can't the Kindle at least read an EPUB file. I mean, a lot of people have free books available as eBooks. Why can't I read those on my Kindle? Why do I have to convert it to a Mobi file first? That, that, you know, that's one thing. Here's a second thing. And I'm going to make a video about this later. Kindle's uh, eBook store will not let Smashwords books into their store until they've been downloaded a thousand times on Smashwords first. And I've decided that I'm going to, rather than getting my own Kindle store, I'm going to stick with Smashwords and I'm going to make most of my eBooks free for the first 1000 downloads. Kindle doesn't miss out on money and they don't get to make me make two separate stores. I'm going to get to the point half of society has decided they don't want to be told what to do. It's not that they don't want to be bossed or controlled. It's not that they want freedom, though they tell themselves such. Actually, they just want everything to be their own idea. They don't ask whether their actions will succeed or fail. They don't ask if something is good or bad, desirable, healthy, painful, useful, wise, or quite the opposite of all these. They only ask whether someone is telling them. If you tell such people, go, thrive, and succeed, they will fail on purpose. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.